it almost seems like this camera was designed, built, and marketed by someone who doesn't know what a camera is. Hi, how's it going? Well, it was bound to happen. With the success of cameras like the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, the generic cams looking to take advantage of the hype of this form factor are starting to pop up. One result is this Ordro M3. It looks the part, and obviously that's the point, to look like a good camera to get people to buy it. But is it actually any good? The camera comes with a molded carrying case, a USB-C to A cable, and a 64 gigabyte memory card. It says it's a SanDisk Extreme card. It seems to read reasonably fast, and it did hold roughly 64 gigabytes of data. But I compared it to a bunch of other SanDisk Extreme micro SD cards, and I have a few of those here. Compared to the other SanDisk cards, the font is a bit different in spots, and the back of the card looks very different. The card was also in a generic plastic case that is nothing like what I've received any SanDisk Extreme cards in. I can't say for sure, but I strongly suspect it's a fake, which is annoying on principle even if it does work. Ordro cameras used to include demonstrably fake Kingston memory cards, so I don't think I'm out of line to be skeptical. This camera claims to have 5K video and 36 megapixel photos, but it also boldly claims to have an 8 megapixel Sony sensor. Full 5K video is more like 14 and a half megapixels, and even 4K is slightly over 8 megapixels. So it's certainly doing some kind of upscaling, even if it really has a Sony 8 megapixel sensor, and even if it's actually using the whole sensor. All right, just jumping in to say I did a little bit more research. I did find the data sheet from Sony for the sensor that is supposedly in this camera, the sensor that they claim is in this camera. And apparently it is actually a 16 by 9 4K sensor. So theoretically, it could do 4K UHD readout from this sensor if they were using the full pixel readout mode. The sensor supports several other readout modes, so it's very possible they are using a lower than 4K readout from the sensor just because of the processing power in the camera and then upscaling it, but theoretically would be capable of 4K readout, but certainly not 5K. It also claims wide dynamic range, 10 times digital zoom, continuous recording, and it specifically says it has gimbal anti-shake. Spoiler, all of that is basically false. Maybe you've already sussed out what I guessed from the pics in the ads. This isn't a gimbal. It's just a shockingly heavy, rigid, fixed, L-shaped piece of metal. Well, I didn't guess the heavy part. The ad says it has gimbal anti-shake, but that's just a lie. While clearly designed to look like a gimbal, it isn't one. This camera doesn't have any gimbal action at all, or even any optical stabilization in the lens. It does have digital stabilization, and oh, we'll talk about that in a bit, but the physical design is clearly intended to mislead people. The fake gimbal head is weirdly heavy too. Overall, this camera is surprisingly heavy. It's also kind of slick to hold and oddly balanced with much more weight toward the top. While the head isn't a gimbal, it does have a pointlessly motorized rotation feature. You can rotate the camera to face either direction with a little motor that's controlled by a rocker switch. The rocker doubles as a button, and when pushed in even slightly, it locks and won't rock. That's frustrating enough, but regardless, it's one of the most pointlessly motorized things I've ever seen. It would be genuinely easier and faster to simply rotate it manually, but you can't. There's also major backlash in the gearing, so if you stop anywhere other than the extreme ends, it can just totally flop around. Plus, it won't just stay where you put it. When you turn the camera off, it will always spin around to face the display. There's an option in the menu to pick which way it will default to facing when powered up, but if you set it to facing away, it will still flip back every time and then flip back again when you turn it back on. It's just so unnecessary. Also, when the camera is facing in the selfie direction, it mirrors the image. It flips vertically, but it doesn't flip horizontally, so it just ends up mirrored. Also, pointing the camera towards the display completely breaks the image stabilization, but we'll get there. The display can also rotate, and at least it's not motorized. 
Rotating the display selects between vertical and landscape video. When you record vertical video, it literally just crops off the sides of the landscape video. So it dramatically reduces the field of view and resolution. This could have been a handy motorized feature to implement. Have the camera module rotate 90 degrees horizontally when you flip the screen. This would maintain full field of view and resolution. But no, it just crops away the sides of the video and turns stabilization off. The touch screen works well enough to navigate the menu and you can also navigate the menu with this little rocker switch, but it, it just keeps locking up when you try to do it. It's pretty frustrating, so it's kind of pointless to use. The touchscreen is much easier. You cannot access the menu while recording, and that means you can't change things like exposure compensation while recording. The white balance menu actually has a color temp setting allowing for a semi-custom white balance, which is a first in any generic camera I've looked at. But the one time I managed to select it, I couldn't adjust the setting far enough to get in the color balance where I wanted, so I just went back to auto. Why did I only manage to try it once? Well, all but one of the times I tried to choose this option, the camera crashed and rebooted with all factory settings. It actually worked the second time I tried it, so I thought the crash was a fluke. I tried about five more times and it crashed every time, so the one time it worked was the fluke. So we can see that it's not a fluke. Nope, <laughs> there it goes. Reboots the camera. The rest of the white balance setting modes are almost as unhelpful, being generally too orange or too blue in most situations. So everything but auto white balance is pretty much useless. And it's a cloudy day, so here's the cloudy white balance preset. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't know that I need to say much about that. So that's 5K. Cloudy white balance on a very cloudy day. There are three exposure metering modes. Multi-mode is the default, center mode seems the same as multi-mode, and the spot mode adjusts exposure based on a single pinpoint in the center, which cannot be moved. Again, another set of options that are basically pointless. There is an exposure compensation setting that allows adjustment up and down plus or minus two EV. That's the only manual exposure adjustment option and it cannot be changed while recording. There is a pre-record mode that does work. When turned on and armed, the camera is pre-recording, and when you hit the record button again, it will start saving the file and add the previous five seconds to the video, and that works. The camera has a wide angle lens like an action camera, and like most action cameras, it is fixed focus and fixed aperture. It also has a ton of distortion, which is expected for an extreme wide angle lens, but it seems excessive for the actual viewing angle provided. There's also a significant loss of clarity and contrast toward the edges. There's a linear mode which corrects the curvature, but it stretches things a bit, reduces clarity, crops in a ton, goes a bit too far, and actually introduces slight pincushion distortion, and it's only available when stabilization is turned off. 5K30, no image stabilization, this is the field of view. 5K30 linear mode, this is the field of view where it corrects the distortion. Ordro 5K30. This is with image stabilization. Uh, vertical mode, this is the field of view. This camera has only digital stabilization and there are limitations, though it is one of the few Ordro cameras where stabilization does anything at all. So I guess props for that. And that brings us, finally, to the stabilization. Turning stabilization on introduces a significant crop. This may be a blessing in disguise because of the significant distortion and blur toward the outer part of the frame, but it is a big loss of field of view. And as mentioned, it cannot be used in conjunction with distortion correction. It can be used in all resolutions, but only at 30 frames per second, not 60 frames per second or up. It also cannot be used in vertical recording mode. If you switch to vertical video, no stabilization. With all of that in mind, the stabilization does work if you have the camera facing away from the display. It gets a bit jerky and twitchy at times with weird artifacts, details jiggling, and warping a bit. And in low light, it gets really blurry, which isn't uncommon for digital stabilization, but I think it's more than fair to point out since they falsely claimed 
it was gimbal stabilized. Still, it's better than nothing. That is, until you rotate the camera to face toward the screen. For some reason, when the camera is in the selfie mode facing this way like it is now, the stabilization absolutely falls apart. The image turns into a jiggly, warping nightmare. I don't know, I had to test something because I just saw something very odd with the stabilization in one video and I don't know if that was a fluke or if it was the way I was holding it. So let's test this. So this is walking with the camera facing forward and this is walking with the camera facing the display like it would be if you were doing like a selfie vlog. Obviously, I don't have it pointing towards me because I just want to do a comparison of the stabilization, but it seems like the stabilization is very different between, well, depending on which way the camera is facing. So, why would it be different? But let's see. And if you were going to use this camera for, you know, a vlog pointing at you, this is the camera held at arm's length with uh, image stabilization on. I'm probably squinting quite a bit because the sun is like right there. And uh, yeah, this is how it looks. I think my face is massively overexposed, but it's hard to tell in the screen because the screen tends to make things look uh, like they have less dynamic range than they actually do. So highlights tend to look blown out on the display when they aren't actually in the recording. But this is how it looks. 5K, 30 frames per second, image stabilization on. I have no idea why this happens, but I confirmed it is consistent. It's not a fluke. If you use this camera in the selfie vlogging mode, stabilization is eye torture and the image is mirrored. Audio recording is probably the best I've found in any Ordro camera. It's actually okay. Well, it's okay when it isn't clipping or picking up terrible handling noise from the mic, which is in the bottom of the camera. There are three mic level options in the menu, but no level meters, so it's trial and error time. I found that the audio peaks and distorts from a normal speaking volume when held at arm's length at the default medium setting. I had to set it to low to avoid clipping. It has a 3.5mm jack for external mics, but it didn't work with any of the mics that I tried. It probably just doesn't provide plug-in power and would work with a powered mic, but I don't know for sure because I didn't have any powered mic handy to test it out, and there's nowhere to mount a powered mic on this camera anyway. There are quarter 20 threads on the bottom of the camera, but they are so shallow that none of the various quick release plates I have actually get tight. The screw bottoms out before the plate gets tight. I suppose I could use spacers or modify something to make it work if I had to, but how hard is it to get the tripod threads right? The power button is right next to the record button on the side of the camera, and there's nothing to differentiate them from one another, like a nub on one of them or something. And because of the shape of the body above and below the buttons, it's not even immediately obvious from feel if you're on the top or bottom button. So it's just a poorly thought out design. There is, however, an on-screen record button that you can touch to start and stop recording, so I found myself using that. There's also no real comfortable way to hold this camera. You can't wrap your hand quite all the way around it because it's got a pretty wide body. So the best option is sort of to kind of pinch it like this front and back, but because it's so top heavy, it ends up kind of wanting to wobble around. It's, it's just a little bit awkward. And if you try to just, you know, grip the grip it from the sides with your fingers, you have to keep your fingers low enough that they're not hitting the buttons on the sides. And so again, it just ends up being kind of wobbly and top heavy. In selfie mode, it's really not much better because you can't even grip it like this anymore because you'd be hitting the start and stop recording button. So now you kind of have to hold it like this. And, you know, if you want to try and grip it like this low, it kind of wobbles. If you grip it up high like this, you'll be constantly hitting this rocker or heck, even the button that stops recording. So you, you almost kind of have to hold it down low again. And now again, it's just a little bit awkward. Typically, I prefer to use an actual camera as opposed to a phone for video, just based on ergonomics but as awkward as holding a phone is while recording, I'd rather record video with my phone than with this Ordro. Battery life is pretty good. They claim four to six hours of recording. I didn't do a timed rundown test full to dead. Ain't nobody got time for that, but it does have pretty good battery life. 
On one day of testing, I'd say I got around two and a half hours of recording without it dying, but the battery gauge had been showing red for quite a while. So I doubt it would last as long as they say, but it's still pretty good. On the other hand, the battery is built in, cannot be swapped out, and it charges very slow. It came with a USB-C to A cable, and it has a USB-C port for charging. But like another generic camera I tested, it won't charge with most USB-C chargers. I have a 15 watt USB-C charger that was actually a power supply that came with a cheap LED light, and that will charge this camera, though it stays room temp, so I doubt it's charging at anywhere near 15 watts. But all of my other USB-C chargers do nothing when plugged into this camera, so despite working with every other device I have, including non-USB-C devices with adapter cables, they won't work with this. So don't count on being able to charge this camera with a USB-C charger that you already have because it probably won't work. The ad for this camera specifically mentions continuous recording, and it can record continuously, kind of. When a file reaches four gigabytes, it stops recording and then starts again, but it's not seamless. If you combine the files in an editor, there are almost two seconds missing, so it's not technically continuous. There will be a new file with a roughly two second gap in between every time the file reaches four gigabytes. Like so many other generic camcorders, this one can record in IR and it has two little infrared lights next to the lens that come on when you're in IR mode. So here's a test of the IR mode. Uh, it's just before sunrise and I can actually see fairly well with the naked eye. So there should be plenty of IR around for the IR light or for the IR mode. If I turn the IR mode on, you can see, yeah, it does see pretty well. That's probably about as well as I can see with the naked eye. Although maybe a tiny bit better in areas where the built-in light is shining on things. So but I don't think I don't think the IR light is doing much out there as far as like the fence and the shed. This mode works okay. It's not going to rival more expensive name brand cameras, but if you just want something that can record an IR, it works. The built-in IR light does okay inside in typical spaces, but in very large spaces or outside, it doesn't light up stuff very far away, but it still does better than many other generic cameras. The ad says it's 5K resolution and provides more detail than 4K, but as with most of these cameras, it looks worse than good 1080p. Poor lens quality combined with noise, noise reduction, and artifacts all result in a slightly mushy look. There's also a lot of lens artifacts like glare and chromatic aberration. Overall, the video quality is okay, is what I would say if this was half the price and they claimed it was 1080p, but they claim it's 5K, and a DJI Osmo Action 3 is about the same price right now. In fact, I recently saw the Action 3 at a major retailer for $20 less than this Ordro. And the Action 3 looks better in 1080p than the Ordro does in 5K. But you don't even have to compare the Ordro to another camera to see that it's not 5K. If you compare the 5K video to the 1080p video from this Ordro, they are virtually identical. It's not 5K. The claim of 10 times digital zoom is hilariously false. You want to see the 10 times zoom on this camera? Here it comes. And that's it. It's literally less zoom than the four times digital zoom on an Action 3. All right, Ordro camera, test of the 10 times optical, or digital zoom, 10 times digital zoom. And that is not 10 times. <laughs> that is not very much zoom. Wow. And that is not 10 times zoom. Okay, I'm now recording in 5K, 30 frames per second on the Ordro. And I'm going to zoom in as far as it goes to demonstrate what is supposed to be 10 times digital zoom. So, zooming in, and that's it. That's where it stops. That is supposedly 10 times digital zoom. And for comparison, here's a shot from the DJI Osmo Action 3. And it's currently in standard D warp mode, but it still has a wider field of view than the other camera. But I am going to now engage four times digital zoom. All right, there's two, three, and that's four. Oh, nope, 
four. There we go. So now that is supposedly 4x digital zoom on the Osmo Action. And to me, it seems like quite a bit more than what the other camera had, considering it was starting from wider and now seems to be at least as tight, if not tighter. It's also digital zoom on a camera that already lacks detail, so it's about as useful as you'd expect. And honestly, I can say the same thing about the zoom on the Action 3. Dynamic range isn't the worst I've seen, but it's not great. Standard exposure, no wide dynamic range, everything at default. Exposure compensation still at zero, wide dynamic range on. Wide dynamic range mode off, negative one EV exposure compensation. Negative one EV exposure compensation, wide dynamic range on. The high frame rate modes work okay, but there's no stabilization, and for some reason, the distortion and edge blurring stands out more, maybe due to the reduced motion blur. Either way, they don't look very good. The time lapse mode works for stationary time lapse, but there's no stabilization, so if you try to create a motion time lapse, even while walking very carefully, the results are pretty unwatchable. The slow motion modes also work, though rather than the 1080p and 720p claimed, I'd say it's more like 720p in the 4x mode, and the 8x mode is more like 360p, but they do work. I'm going to bring up the Osmo Action 3 again. It has far higher resolution at the same speeds, and it records sound, which the Ordro does not. I think rather than whatever guts they normally put in their generic camcorders, this one has the guts from a generic action camera. But it almost seems like this camera was designed, built, and marketed by someone who doesn't know what a camera is. So many features are just bizarrely messed up. It certainly isn't 5K. It has far less than 10 times digital zoom. Continuous recording results in a couple missed seconds every time it starts a new file. The quarter 20 mounting point isn't threaded deep enough to actually work. The mic jack doesn't provide plug-in power. The ergonomics aren't very good. One of the white balance modes crashes the camera. The rest of the white balance modes are basically unusable. Even though it says gimbal stabilized, this isn't a gimbal. The digital stabilization isn't very good and is totally broken at times. And the image quality and audio quality are fair at best and would be beaten by pretty much any name brand action camera or cell phone from the last few generations. Not to mention that you can get far better cameras right now for the same money or less. The DJI Action 3 is a similar price right now, but it's better in just all the ways. Image quality, audio quality, features in general, reliability, durability, warranty, mounting options, and on and on. This is so much better, it's silly. And I found it on sale for less than this Ordro. But for me personally, all of that is secondary. I couldn't feel right recommending this camera regardless. Not when they are filling the ads with misleading and outright false claims. So that's it. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care.